This video is going to cover the topic of ratio tape diagrams. Be sure the date and topic are at the top of your page. The essential question for this video is how can we use tape diagrams to model and interpret ratios? Before we look at some tape diagrams, we just want to make sure we know what a tape diagram is. And a tape diagram is a visual model and it uses rectangles to represent the parts of a ratio. Either the part to part or a part to whole can be used, can be researched by using tape diagrams. Tape diagrams require a bit of attention to detail as you set it up, otherwise they aren't particularly useful. So you want to make sure that you're careful as you're setting these up. I'm going to start with this example where we have two students and we know the ratio of marbles between them. David clearly has two marbles to every three marbles that Justin has. However, in total, we know that they have 35 marbles. They don't just have the five that we see. The question is, how many marbles does each student have? I'm going to show you how I'm going to visually show this with a tape diagram. I've modeled the portions of marbles for both David and Justin, and I was careful that the rectangles are uniform in size and are lined up on the left-hand side. That's going to make it easier for me to see what I'm looking for. On the right-hand side, I've also recorded that there are a total of 35 marbles. It's clearly visual, visible now to see that the students together have five rectangles worth of marbles, and the total number of marbles is 35. If I take my 35 total marbles and divide it by the five rectangles that I have here, or squares in this case, I know that each one of these squares is going to represent seven marbles. Since David has two of these, I know he must have 14 marbles. And since Justin has three of these, I know he must have 21 marbles. And a quick check, 14 plus 21 does make the 35 total. I'm able to use this tape diagram to see how many marbles they each have, even though the ratio that I started with was a simplified version of the real data. Let's try another example. In this example, we're comparing students in a class, and the ratio of boys to girls is 5 to 7. And we also know that the total number of students are 36. So we're going to go ahead and set up a tape diagram that represents this. Remember, as you're setting this up, to be careful that you are using the same sized square or rectangle to represent both the boys and the girls as you're setting up your units. The first thing I want to do is figure out how many squares or rectangles there are total. And if it's five boys and seven girls, I know that's a total of 12 squares or rectangles, but I know that I have 36 students, so I need to take my 36 and divide it by my 12 to figure out how much is represented by each square. So in this case, 36 divided by 12 means there are three students for every one of these boxes or rectangles. To answer the questions then, it says how many girls are there and how many boys are there. Well, the boys is 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. For the girls, we'd have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, and 21. And a quick check does tell us that 15 plus 21 makes our 36 total. And of course, that answers this question. But there's another part. How many more girls are there than boys? So if there are 21 girls and there are 15 boys. If I subtract that, I find out that there are six more girls than boys, and that would answer the second portion. Remember, the essential question for this video is how can we use and model tape diagrams, uh, excuse me, how can we use tape diagrams to model and interpret ratios? This is just a small piece of what we can do with tape diagrams. We can use them for more complex problems, um, and we will do more of that in the future in class and perhaps in another video. Um, but right now we just want to introduce what a tape diagram is. If this is 
something that seems a bit confusing, be sure to go back and rewatch it and come in with questions for class.